Until now, we've primarily discussed the differences between societies. Rather than discuss their problems and configurations, we'll now explore how society came to be and how sociologists view social interaction. In 1966 sociologists Peter Berger and Thomas Luckman wrote a book called The Social Construction of Reality. In it, they argued that society is created by humans and human interaction, which they call habitualization. Habitualization describes how, any action that is repeated frequently becomes cast into a pattern, which can then be, performed again in the future in the same manner and with the same economical effort, Berger and Luckman, 1966. Not only do we construct our own society but we also accept it as it is because others have created it before us. Society is, in fact, habit. For example, your school exists as a school and not just as a building because you and others agree that it is a school. If your school is older than you are, it was created by the agreement of others before you. In a sense, it exists by consensus, both prior and current. This is an example of the process of institutionalization, the act of implanting a convention or norm into society. Bear in mind that the institution, while socially constructed, is still quite real. Another way of looking at this concept is through W. I. Thomas's notable Thomas theorem which states, if men define situations as real, they are real in their consequences. Thomas and Thomas 1928. That is, people's behavior can be determined by their subjective construction of reality rather than by objective reality. For example, a teenager who is repeatedly given a label, overachiever, player, bum, might live up to the term even though it initially wasn't a part of his character. Like Berger and Luckman in their description of habitualization, Thomas states that our moral codes and social norms are created by successive definitions of the situation. This concept is defined by sociologist Robert K. Merton as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Merton explains that with a self-fulfilling prophecy, even a false idea can become true if it is acted upon. One example he gives is of a bank run. Say for some reason, a number of people falsely fear that their bank is soon to be bankrupt. Because of this false notion, people run to their bank and demand all of their cash at once. As banks rarely, if ever, have that much money on hand, the bank does indeed run out of money, fulfilling the customer's prophecy. Here, reality is constructed by an idea. Symbolic interactionists offer another lens through which to analyze the social construction of reality. With a theoretical perspective focused on the symbols, like language, gestures, and artifacts, that people use to interact, this approach is interested in how people interpret those symbols in daily interactions. Interactionists also recognize that language and body language reflect our values. One has only to learn a foreign tongue to know that not every English word can be easily translated into another language. The same is true for gestures. While Americans might recognize a thumbs up as meaning great, in Germany it would mean one, and in Japan it would mean five. Thus, our construction of reality is influenced by our symbolic interactions. As you can imagine, people employ many types of behaviors in day-to-day -day life, Roles are patterns of behavior that we recognize in each other that are representative of a person's social status. Currently, while reading this text, you are playing the role of a student. However, you also play other roles in your life, such as, daughter, neighbor, or, employee. These various roles are each associated with a different status. Sociologists use the term status to describe the responsibilities and benefits that a person experiences according to their rank and role in society. Some statuses are ascribed those you do not select, such as son, elderly person, or female. Others, called achieved statuses, are obtained by choice, such as a high school dropout, self-made millionaire, or nurse. As a daughter or son, you occupy a different status than as a neighbor or employee. One person can be associated with a multitude of roles and statuses. Even a single status such as, student, has a complex role set, or array of roles, attached to it. Merton, 1957. It is important to note that status refers to the rank in social hierarchy, while role is the behavior expected of a person holding a certain status. If too much is required of a single role, individuals can experience role strain. Consider the duties of a parent. Cooking, cleaning, driving, problem solving, acting as a source of moral guidance, the list goes on. Similarly, a person can experience role conflict when one or more roles are contradictory. A parent who also has a full-time career can experience role conflict on a daily basis. When there is a deadline at the office but a sick child needs to be picked up from school, which comes first? When you are working toward a promotion but your children want you to come to their school play, which do you choose? Being a college student can conflict with being an employee, being an athlete, or even being a friend. 
Our roles in life have a great effect on our decisions and who we become. Presentation of self. Of course, it is impossible to look inside a person's head and study what role they are playing. All we can observe is behavior or role performance. Role performance is how a person expresses his or her role. Sociologist Irving Goffman presented the idea that a person is like an actor on a stage. Calling his theory dramaturgy, Goffman believed that we use impression management to present ourselves to others as we hope to be perceived. Each situation is a new scene, and individuals perform different roles depending on who is present, Goffman 1959. Think about the way you behave around your coworkers versus the way you behave around your grandparents versus the way you behave with a blind date. Even if you're not consciously trying to alter your personality, your grandparents, coworkers, and date probably see different sides of you. As in a play, the setting matters as well. If you have a group of friends over to your house for dinner, you are playing the role of a host. It is agreed upon that you will provide food and seating and probably be stuck with a lot of the cleanup at the end of the night. Similarly, your friends are playing the roles of guests, and they are expected to respect your property and any rules you may set forth. Don't leave the door open or the cat will get out. In any scene, there needs to be a shared reality between players. In this case, if you view yourself as a guest and others view you as a host, there are likely to be problems. Impression management is a critical component of symbolic interactionism. For example, a judge in a courtroom has many props to create an impression of fairness, gravity, and control, like their robe and gavel. Those entering the courtroom are expected to adhere to the scene being set. Just imagine the impression that can be made by how a person dresses. This is the reason that attorneys frequently select the hairstyle and apparel for witnesses and defendants in courtroom proceedings. Goffman's dramaturgy ideas expand on the ideas of Charles Cooley and the looking glass self. According to Cooley, we base our image on what we think other people see, Cooley 1902. We imagine how we must appear to others, then react to this speculation. We don certain clothes, prepare our hair in a particular manner, wear makeup, use cologne, and the like, all with the notion that our presentation of ourselves is going to affect how others perceive us. We expect a certain reaction, and, if lucky, we get the one we desire and feel good about it. But more than that, Cooley believed that our sense of self is based upon this idea. We imagine how we look to others, draw conclusions based upon their reactions to us, and then we develop our personal sense of self. In other words, people's reactions to us are like a mirror in which we are reflected.